and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at numbers and math in NIM so let's first start with a nice NIM quirk that you can have so let's create a variable ln for a very long number and let's say we want to make it 2 billion which I found not mistaken is like 9 zero so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Now this is incredibly difficult to read. However, in NIM we have a nice feature. Let's say we go here. Yes, see, I'm already having trouble here. We go like this. In NIM, an underscore does not get read if it's inside of a number like this. So this makes it a ton easier to read. Plus, the value itself will not be different. So here you go. We'll still get the same amount of zeros, but now it's so much easier to see not only how many zeros there are, but just what the actual value is. So yeah, that's just one nice quirk I wanted to show you. All right, let's talk about mathematical operations. One plus seven. That will give you eight. Simple as that. All right, let's go through all of them. I'm not going to sit here forever. Okay, so one plus seven, one minus seven, one times seven, or actually let's go here and say two times seven just to get a different value. Times is represented with an asterisk. And let's go 14 divided by seven, which is represented with a forward slash. Take note, a forward slash is not the same as a backward slash, a backslash there not the same as a forward slash. Div, so let's say we have 15. Let's make both of these 15. 15 div, which is the same as divide, but it has a little quirk. We also have things like mod, so 25 mod 4, which is basically modulo. And then you have order of operation, which would be 5 times 2 plus nine, which is not the same as five times two plus nine in brackets, order of operations. Now let's get our results and then I'll explain what's going on. So let's start here at the top. Eight, that's just plus. Negative six, that's just minus. 14, that's just times. 15 divided by seven is 2.1428, and that's just divide. Div is the same as divide, however, it will always return an integer. So these two are the same, but this will return a float and this will return an integer. To refresh your memory, a float is anything that is not a whole number, so 1.23, whilst an integer is a whole number, so int is like 3, or in this case it would be 1 if we were to make those two. So this is an int, that's a float, div will return an int, divide will return a float. Cool. One mod is modulus. Now, I'm going to leave that for the end, so let's skip that for now. And in order of operation, we all know in math, you do times first, so basically you have your brackets here, and then you do plus nine. But by using brackets, you can specify, first add these together, then do the times. So yeah, that's just if you want to do the order of operations. Cool. And now as for modulus, basically, remember when you were like in grade three or two, where you had to do things like 25 divided by four, and that would be 6.25, right? However, you didn't do this. You didn't do that in like grade three or grade two. Instead, you did... 6 res1 because 4 times 6 that will give you 24 then you have one left before you get to 25 do you remember this basically modulus is this res1 it's what's left over so if you say 4 times 6 you'll get 24 and then there's one left they basically is 0.25 there but it's here that's what modulus is so if we were to go and we were to say 3, we'd get 1. 
Why would we get 1? We'll get 1 because it is going to be 2 and then it's going to go to 4. However, it cannot go to 4 because there's 3 here and it's 3 modulo 2. So it's going to be 2 res 1 and we're going to see this res 1. Let's say we were to say 3 instead and now we were to say 5. Now it's going to be 1 res 2. So now if we run this, we'll get 2. If we were to make sure that's a comment, we'll get 2. Right, let's talk about type casting. So here we have x, which is an int, and it is 5. We also have y, which is a float, and that is equal to 10.5. And then we have z, which is a string. And it is equal to 15 inch quotation marks. To get the type of a variable, so the data type, we could do something like x dot type. Or again, because type is a function, you can say type of x, or in this case, we can actually go y, or even type of z. If we run this, we get int float string that are their data types. To convert an integer to a float, you can use float. So echo float x. That will convert x into a float here. Not the actual variable, but just the output of this float will give you a float value. So x will still be of type integer, but the value we get from this float x here, so we were to just do this. There we go. Will be different. So we run this. As you can see, x is still an int. So it started out as an int and it stayed an int. But the value we got from float is 5.0. So 5 was converted from an integer to a float. And here you can see if we get the value of this output, it will be a float. You can also use dot to float. Since we already know x itself won't change, we can just go x dot to float will get 5.0. You also convert to an integer. So we can say int y and it will return 10. It will always return this value, no matter what this value here is, but this will always return 10. And of course you can also say dot to int and to int will return the same value. And in con to convert a float or an integer to a string, you can just use dollar. So dollar $x and dollar $y will return a string. If we were to actually use type of, type of dollar $x, then you'll actually see we get a string. So here they won't look any different, but their data type here is a string. So a dollar $x will convert it to a string. For example, let's say we wanted to say, I am like that. Now you cannot add a number like this. If we were to do this, we'll get an error. Primarily because you cannot add a string and a float. But if you convert y into a string by using dollar, y itself is a string. So we get this. It works perfectly fine. To convert a string into a float or an integer, you need to import str utils. So now we can just say z dot parse int and z dot parse float. And this will convert z into an integer and a float. So as you can see 15 at 15.0 might still look the same, but the difference is z here is now here an integer once it returns here. So we say type z and type z here, we'll get an int and a float. And that's the basics of math and casting in NIM. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.